Welcome to Going Rogue, the podcast for clear-eyed rebels and utopia preppers. I'm here as always with the rogue journalist, Caitlin Johnston. I'm Caitlin's worst half, Tim Foley. Caitlin, what do you got for us today? I got a woo-woo article. A woo-woo article? <laughs> yes. It's been a while since you put out one of those. Yeah, you this mean... one's been percolating for a while though. We've talked about a little bit about the kind of concept of this in our podcast together. Mm. So I, th- I thought it was like worth sculpting out into one. But there's been so much news happening, it's been kind of impossible to... Like, just just had to beat the fuck out of Boris Johnson for a few, for several a few articles. Days. Yeah, yeah, and, and then, then there was John Bolton before that. That was, was whole... Julian Assange. It's it, really it's a lot going on, man. Busy girl. Yeah. So <laughs> it's called this revolution is non ideological, right? <clears throat> I really wanted to make uh, this very clear. Now, um, most people will balk at that idea that it's a non ideological revolution even the bernie people who are like well you know we're we're bernie people this is our revolution we're bernie people the trump people will say the same etc it's like it's like everyone needs to kind of have like this belief system in place that they share with each other and that's where all the arguments come from like you know we're on the left, we're just, just it's just a disaster. Like we're factions upon factions. We factionalized ourselves into like individual people. Like, <laughs> it's just, no one can get along with anyone else. It's just awful. Like, um, and the right's not much better. They are a bit better, but not much. So yeah, there's this this desire to kind of, and I guess it's human. To, to drag someone into your perfect ideological point of view to all your beliefs and ideas about how this thing is going to work and how, how to put it in place and, you know, your whole plan or whatever, your way. Uh, and if you c- can't get people to align perfectly with that, then you argue with them and then you split from them or whatever. It's all based on very ancient tribal instincts you know it's the same as freaking uh barracking for a football team or like being a part of a religion or like um it's just it's just monkey politics really um and it doesn't serve us and and the thing is here we are doing all of this shit like we're arguing over whether or not like Julian Assange is left or not left or you know all this crap meanwhile the people at the top have no ideologies whatsoever they don't care they've never they don't have a god they're doing this for like they don't believe in any of this shit they only use ideologies to to keep us all fighting each other or when they serve whatever purpose they've got going at that point in time Right, because an ideology is is like a value system. It's what do you what what changes are you hoping to affect uh, to affect upon the world? What do you care about? What 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 agendas do, are important for you to advance on on behalf of society? Yeah. Whereas, while well, these people they they don't they care. Have. They have no value system. It's it, it's really just dominance. It it's it says ideological as a rape yeah it's the value system of what's best for me as an individual just myself it's the value system of self-interest in in what way can i best amass resources for myself and deprive them of everyone else so that i can be their ruler yeah that's the whole thing so you look at the kosh brothers who are apparently libertarian what no come on no people like of course they're not libertarian they just use it because it's like a, it's an easy way of getting people to release um uh power you know like to hand so small governments got that we don't want people you know we don't want governments uh, acting in our interests anymore and they're like oh that sounds very interesting i think i'll have a little bit of that ideology because <laughs> right. of course i want deregulation because i you know i'm a big fucking business and i want to amass as much power as possible without any government oversight etc uh, and, you know, but there's socialism has been used, every ideology has been used to by the very powerful to amass power and money. And on your point about the Koch brothers, they, um, they, they like bought Newsweek. Right. 
and they'll happily influence politics. They'll buy up politicians. They're happy to keep big government as long as it's working for them. They just don't want big government interfering, stopping them from doing their thing. But they'll happily use it as a tool to manipulate and expand their empire. Right. But they can get their kind of voting block of libertarians to lobby for the um, deregulation of, you know, of various things that they want to happen. Yeah. And you see that with plutocrats all over the place. He, the Soros is the exact same way, but he, he, you know, associates, he manipulates a, a different part of the political sector, generally speaking. He, I mean, he, he's all over the place. Uh, s- same with uh, fucking Bezos. Mm. Um He's they're they're Amazon's pouring money into lobbying right now just to just to expand their thing and he's more like intelligence community and uh, defense department and Pentagon stuff yeah um, but they're all they're all finding different ways to to ally themselves with power and, and ways to best expand their empire and that's all they care about they, they it's it's just how do I dominate as many humans as possible exactly. So here we are, the dickheads who are yelling at each other for not being the exact kind of lefty that I think that you should be. And, like, that they don't deal in ideologies and we should not even pay it any heed at this point in time because they, they just use it to manipulate us. They just use it to wedge us. It's wedge politics, basically, over yeah. and over and over and over again. Um, and so, yeah, we can't get any kind of, um, actually one of the Twitter people, uh, posted the, the most awesome little clip of Monty Python where they're sitting around, um, and, uh, and there's a, oh, I can't, I probably can't take the audio from it, but like the, yeah, he, he comes up and says, oh, who are you guys? You're, we're the people for Ju- Judea. People's Front of Judea, Judea. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. and, the, and then there was the other one that was like the Judean pe- People's Front. And they were like, hey, fuck you. Yeah, they hate those people. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so, yeah, and that's what it's like on the left, you know. It's These just tiny, tiny fractions where it's like, it's not enough to be like, you, so you get, you get the, the broader left and then you've got like the kind of the kind of left of Bernie left, and who who who, t- who talk about Bernie like he he's this r- bloodthirsty right winger. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got the people who think those people are bloodthirsty r- right wingers. It's like and and then you've got like the more conspiracy minded leftists versus the non conspiracy. You've got the inner pro intervention leftists and then the and the anti intervention leftists, right. the ones with kind of the neo conservative foreign policy going on. Yeah. But they're all, they're all they also socialists and you've got the the anti-interventionist ones and you got the conspiracy minded ones and that like once you get into the conspiracy field that's like that's so fragmented because they they, like everyone's a disinfo agent and and there's not one single person i don't think that (laughs) that i've been told is not a a disinfo agent at some point yeah yeah (laughs) everyone (laughs) everyone and they say they keep yeah it's just so paranoid and fractured and yeah. Factionalized. Yeah, so we're just going to blow that shit away, you know, like at this point. In right, at least as far as it, as, as fighting the oligarchs goes. Right. Uh, as far as fighting this the, this elite class. I mean, it's fine to have your own ideology. It's fine to, it's, you should have values and things that you care about. Everyone should. But, we, we you know... Don't don't bring a feather to a gunfight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and don't be so manipulated. You know, mm. that's the other thing. It's like, oh my god, they play you like a flute, like mm. a flute. You know, when you see people just arguing over the most banal fucking bullshit. It's like our whole planet is on fire, and you are over there like screaming at each other about something that makes no difference whatsoever at this point in time. Maybe down the road when we have the luxury of, you know, working out um, what the new system is going to look like or, or like. But, you know, that'll happen organically and that'll happen through, like, once we destroy the propaganda machine that uh, is run solely for and by the elites, that is brainwashing the fuck out of all of us so that we believe all their bullshit and we march like good soldiers all in line towards all their wars and, you know, like um, putting together their agendas. Once we destroy that, we won't even know ourselves. We will be able to have real conversations to each other and actually collaborate, you know, in smaller groups um, towards something because we won't constantly have this fucking news cycle that 
spends its life pitting people against each other. Yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, it'll be a completely different different paradigm to be having conversations on. It'll, it'll be like, um, you know, uh, trying to have a conversation with someone after you've both drank a full bottle of NyQuil versus like yeah, a clear-headed right. conversation right. where you can actually it, talk and communicate. Yeah. There won't all be all this bullshit and sludge gumming up the, the mechanics of your interaction. Yeah, because and these echo chambers create different language. You know, often I'll see people talking to each other, attempting to talk to each other, and they're saying the same fucking exact th- same thing, but using different words, different words from their own echo chambers. And they have no idea that they're, like, furiously agreeing with each other. Like, and they can go on for, like, th- threads, like, furiously agreeing with each other. Literally furious. Like, yeah, they're angry at each other. Angry at each other, but, like, you know, like, just not getting that they're saying the exact same fucking thing, just mm. in their different lingo. lingo. So, yeah, we've got to, we've got to wake up, man. Wake up. That was, that was what the whole thing was about. Like, um, there was a really good article in The Intercept called uh, A New Study Shows how American polarization is driven by a team sport mentality and not by disagreement on issues. And this woman had done a study and found that, you know, um, for the most part, people who fiercely identified with being liberal or conservative, they would have uh, like much more difficulty dealing with the idea of, you know, uh, uh, even like having a family member, uh, close to a conservative like actually just you know talking to a conservative person then someone who like loosely identify with conservative being a conservative but actually had very conservative views or a liberal you know who who said yeah i guess i'm liberal but actually had very liberal views so here's the thing our views aren't even coming into this at this point in time. Like, we're just assuming, we're talking to hungry ghosts all the time. We're screaming at each other, and we don't even really know what we're screaming at. Like, we just assume that every liberal has got a pink pussy hat and believes, you know, this 20 set of, like, they've got all these 20 cards in their their uh, in their, um, belief playing card set. And same for the red marga hats, you know? You don't really know what people's actual values are until you have a conversation with them about their values, you know, like at a real heart to heart conversation, not one where they're defensive, but one where they're like, yeah, well, I reckon that maybe, you know, and, and just let them talk about it. Like it's not life and death at this point in time. Anyway, we're just trying to create like a situation where we can do something about this. Right. It would be great if <laughs> it would be great if Americans interacted with one another um, with a full understanding of exactly how politically impotent they both are. <laughs> yeah. You know, at any given time. Like, yeah, okay, you're 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 a conservative and you believe this, and I'm I'm a liberal and I believe that. But actually, it doesn't matter what the fuck either of us believe because uh, it's not a democracy. It's a corporatist oligarchy, and and nothing we vote for matters. Right. But you'll you tr- we treat each other uh, like you would expect. Like if there if there was some indigenous tribe and another indigenous tribe had ten years ago massacred all their women and children, uh, and and. It, we we treat the other side like that tribe would treat the other side the same kind of like fear and yeah. rage and and yeah. and, 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 and vengeance yeah it's it, it, it's really uh it's full of rage and this isn't just on the internet like that survey talked about these these were these are like just real americans mm. and yeah the ones that that are people identify with their team so aggressively that they they do not want a member of the opposite ideology anywhere near them, not in their extended family, not as a neighbor, not as a co-worker. Yeah, when you come down to, like, a lot of these issues come down to people's feelings of safety and security and just different ideas about what makes them safe and secure. Like the gun issue, right? It's just such a Chinese finger trap of an issue because... (laughs) The same situations happen over and over again. There's, you know, these these awful school shootings 
And for the left, that means, well, we should get rid of guns and that will make me feel safer. And for the right, that means we need more guns that will make me feel safer. And so, you know, they're just screaming at each other, not realizing that their actual, you know, what they're yelling at each other is making the other side like to, to clench up and hold tighter to what they, because what they see from the other side is is going to make them less safe. Oh, if we let the libtards be in charge, then there's, this is going to be worse. Or if we let the, you know, re, re, what do they call them? The repub, Republicans. I, I can't, care. I've never tried to say that out loud. <laughs> Who cares? But, you know, yeah, so it's like those Chinese finger traps that, you know, like if you pull, the, the harder you pull, the harder, like it, it grips. Mm. And that's what you get with the, the gun issue. But that's actually like any of those partisan issues and, and that only plays well for the fucking mainstream media. They love those issues because there's no resolution in sight. That, and the more that they can push that, the more they can sell advertising, the more people will be watching it because they, you know, so excited, it excites their animal brain and they, you know, they, their tribal feelings, etc. cetera. Uh, it just does really, really well for them in terms of viewership. So they're just going to keep pushing those, those very fracturing issues yeah and and like the intercept article about that survey said they um what they've successfully created with this this uh wedge politics dynamic is a paradigm where both sides don't care about advancing the issues they're supposed to advance they only care about beating the other side yeah it's this arbitrary game of who has more numbers it doesn't have anything to do really with advancing an agenda that actually was the first thing that i really noticed about american politics was when like uh in the early days of the bernie thing i kept coming across this thing that i I hadn't come across in australian politics which was people would say yeah but he can't win Mm. i'd be like huh (laughs) That, that didn't make it so so what does that mean well i'm not gonna vote for him if he can't win what like that doesn't make any sense whatsoever like what this is not so the whole thing for these people is to end up on the winning side of the team like regardless of what actual agendas are being advanced regardless of who ends up in the the fucking white house doesn't matter as long as i i'm on the winning team as long as i whoa it's not this is not gambling you're not trying to pick the winner it's actually like you're actually trying to pick someone who will represent you correctly Mm. and that 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 should have nothing to do whether or not he'll win or not that blew my mind that kind of competitive hyper competitive mindset that was being applied to politics this hyper team spirit you know like it was super bowl or whatever like i mean even to me like i'm so tribal about sports i would never barrack for a team just because it was winning like you know i am St. Kilda mm. football club through and through that till the day i die they <laughs> are terrible they never win a fucking game but that's okay i am go saints you know like that's, <laughs> that's you can't just change that's because your, that's your green party <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right right but like you know that's like that's principles you stick to your principles not like not just to be the winner. Oh God! All right, so we're off on a tangent here. You got so you, so the ideology thing obviously doesn't work, right? Um, what what does work? What are you pointing at here? What can we do? What we can do is um, is get real with each other. Um, f- stop trying to divide ourselves into little camps just on um, the base of sort of ideology. Uh, develop more of a agree to disagree point of view. If, you know, have a little ideological um, spat with someone if you like, but, you know, make sure you bring it back around to, you know, all right, well, you've got your way, I've got mine, whatever. But here's what I would really love, right? (laughs) Though this might be outside the realm of a journalist. (laughs) But anyway, I'm going to go there. I would like people to start spending time finding out who they really are below all the the fluff 
below all their ideas of who they are and what they should wear and what sort of food they like and what team they like and uh you know they're kind of all their identity things what what are they underneath all of that what what what's your deep what's your core what what, what who are you as a human what is what is the you know like the 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 thing that listens to the voice inside your head so and then that, that just takes reflection and time and stuff but i think the more of us who can do that the more of us will see the fakery you know these these arbitrarily constructed identities that we create you know I'm watching my kids create them now as teenagers you know like and they they try on some new music and then they don't like that music and then they put on some other music or whatever and I mean basically we're all just people who in our teens decided the sort of person that we are and then went with that and then it became this rigid structure of like you know of of what we um what we think we are as a person but we're not that we're the thing that that exists the life that exists underneath of that and once you get really clear on that like those ideologies those identities those clothes that you wear that can be really constricting and can be very like oppressive they start kind of shaking off you like you start puking them up they start burping them out and like they start kind of feeling like like they're not you when you Mm. feel around in your energy body and you find these these things that aren't you and you can just get rid of them you don't have you don't need them Mm. you don't need them um you can always go back to them Um, but you'll have a freshness about them you'll you you won't be holding on to them for dear life because you feel like that's you know if you let them go then you die as a person you don't die as a person right it's more that you're it's something that you're you're holding lightly and consciously because you didn't create it a long time ago and then forget about it and set it on automatic right and forget it's even running yeah. you're just holding there and playing with it and like what's this like and then you can let it go whenever you want right you can be playful with your identities and stuff once we've got some people like that existing and working in the world and bringing light to the world and being playful about that sort of stuff the you know these these assholes who play who manipulate us on our on these these rigid structures that we call personalities uh, they, they're gonna find themselves in a bit of a tough spot because it, it just doesn't work it doesn't work anymore you're like ah oh, you're trying to play me <laughs> you know that doesn't work mate that doesn't work on me so it's a kind of an awakening to your true human spirit but it's also like a a recognition of the kind of the propaganda we create for ourselves you know Mm. here i am my name is caitlin johnston and i like these things and i don't like those things and this you know this is just a story of me and i can change that story whenever i like like that's that doesn't make me a liar that just i'm free to do that that's my free will so i can i can freely change um my identity like i would change clothes if i want to um, because it, it, that's a really interesting point because um, that is th- how we are manipulated. They use they're basically just ego hooks, right? The the propagandists they figured out how to how to toy with our egos, right. and that's why they've got us so so fiendishly divided by what we identify with, where where our egoic identity is uh, uh, me is. me is a liberal me is a conservative me is a this me is a that mm. and the less we're identified with those me stories the harder it is to hook us by them yeah right yeah so i mean and like that's why i like i don't mind the uh the uprising of trolling culture especially mm. on the right or whatever, because they, you know, they show us where we're holding on too tight to <laughs> to our identities. Like, they, you know, if you're feeling really triggered by something that someone said, you know, maybe you're just holding on to it too tight. Like, 
um, none of this is very terribly serious. The only thing that is serious is that we are being manipulated by them mm. uh, and manipulated against their own interests, against the highest interest, against human interest, you know. So it's it's like the diddlers, you know, these the egoic diddlers of the sociopaths at the top. Um, you know, they, they're playing us like a like Greek gods from up on high, you know, they're, they're, they're setting the humans to war upon each other. And, um, and yeah, if, if we didn't have those hooks, they wouldn't be able to puppet us. If we didn't have, if we weren't so ruled by identity and fear and... Fear is a big one. Yeah, clinging to security and, and looking out for who's trying to take away our security I need this thing and you're trying to take away my thing. Yeah. Uh, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, if, if we were, if we, if, if we had a more conscious relationship with what programs we have running in our lives, it would be impossible really to grab us by those programs and set us on automatic and have us scuttling off to fight whatever battle the plutocrats want. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we really are that programmed. You can see it. Uh, and you can especially see it like, you know, I think it's helpful to go and have a look at what the other side is talking about and what their propaganda is like mm. um, and see how they're manipulated because it's much easier to see how the other side is manipulated. You know, that's, that's the way it, it goes. It's like, well, <laughs> oh, they believe Fox News. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you come back to your own little MSNBC bubble, then um, you start to see the same patterns playing out of grabbing at your fear and then pulling you and then telling you what to do. So that's propaganda. That's basically what they they, they incite fear in you. And in, in that situation where you're, you're feeling like helpless, then they issue you an order in an authoritative tone. But if they can't make you afraid, then those orders sound ridiculous. They're yeah. like, oh, you're just ordering me? What? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Like, um, did you see Chris Hayes? Chris Hayes of mm. MSNBC did a special on the Gaza massacre. Wow! Right? That was my initial reaction. Wow! He did that. And that, that actually happened. And, um, you know, got to give him props. Well, gosh, golly gosh, I would never have expected Chris Hayes t to to report on that. And, you know, it is objectively good. Obviously, it's better for people to know about this than, than not for them to know about it. Objectively. But also, the only reason he talked about it, the only reason it came up, was because uh, Trump had had a conversation with Benjamin Netanyahu and didn't bring up the massacre. Oh, and that was the only reason. That was that was what he focused on was how was was how Trump didn't talk. And, you know, obviously, yeah, sure, Trump's an asshole, and so is Netanyahu, and and but it's it's the only the only way that you can get um, this issue talked about is, is if you can find some way to loop it into to Trump wedge. hysteria. Yeah, to yeah, to to more and more wedge wedges. politics. Yeah, right. so yeah. Um, well, I'm happy though that that information went on MSNBC. It, it, it's it can only do good, yeah. But um, but also and, fuck you, Chris Hayes. Oh God, yeah. The, and he waited days what? until days afterwards until this until this this conversation happened, and then then it suddenly it's a news story. You but know how I, how many people I hate, right? I hate a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I have a special special hatred for Chris Hayes. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah, I do. It's just. You know those kindly blue eyes and stuff, and the kind of like the chubby cheeks and everything, and he he just looks so yeah to to like a a, a lefty like me, he's kind of like oh well I probably get along with him because he's sort of dorky sensitive uh, NPR guy exactly <laughs> the, 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 my my old conditioning just goes oh that's one of my people probably right absolutely I have lots of friends who look just like him, and uh, just to to take that whole that whole thing. And then use it to create consent for horrible wars and neoliberal policies that starve people at home. I just just really don't like him. Yeah. There's a little, like, Rachel Maddow. 
You know, same mm. same deal. It's like you look like us. <laughs> you look like us, and you're using it to trick us. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. You're like the you're like the avatars. Yeah, yes. in, in that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're not re- really a, a Navi. You're disguising as one <laughs> just to to get our un- unobtainium. <laughs> we gotta watch that movie again. We hell do. Yeah, that would be so great. You reckon that's done? Yeah. Um, Is there anything else? Um, yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna say a bit about um, just the the collective throwing off of this thing right well i think it's okay i think it's gonna happen in in the privacy of people's houses actually Mm. because i think this is a body thing i think Mm. there's an energy body thing right yeah so it's not um everyone especially on the left likes to talk about like in terms of what who, who's written the right books? Yeah, <laughs> what so, philosophies are correct? Yeah, and, and stuff. but we're not gonna. It's it's like it, it's like trying to fix it with the thing that broke it. You know, we've got too many thoughts. I, anyone on the left would admit that we 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 overly intellectualize everything. Um, I think we've got to let our bodies take over. I, I honestly do, I, and I think that. Um, prioritizing your own physical health and not in a fucking egotistical way where you're going to make yourself look like, you know, a hundred bucks. That's probably not a lot of money is it, to be making your body look. Is it a hundred bucks? <laughs> no, <not>. For a body? <laughs> the whole body. hundred bucks. That's a pretty cheap body, isn't it? Now, anyway, like, yeah, like, you know, giving your system your energy system a chance to express and recover the stress that it is under constantly um just allowing yourself to shake shake it out you know shake it off uh, to be alone to um to give yourself some like space to emote and just uh let your body do what it wants to do um, because I think our bodies have more intelligence than we give them credit for, and our bodies know how to to throw these mind viruses um, off the the shackles of our brains off much better than than any you know words of wisdom that I could impart. Just let your body show you. Right, because if you can really get into your body, it does feel kind of like a cage. You, got, mm. you, you notice, like, there's all this fear over there when I look at those people and I can't move in this way because that's not a way that my egoic identity uh, has allowed for. And it's right. very constraining. And the more conscious you are um, of your physicality and, and your feelings, the the more constrained it, it, it the more obvious it is how constrained you are by these propaganda narratives that have been inflicted upon you for your whole life, not just from mass media, but from religion, from generational narratives created to support power from school. Yeah, from Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't know what's in there. Basically just teaching you obedience over and over again. Yeah, just to be, be a good girl or a good boy. Um yeah, and so, like, trust your body to do whatever it needs to do um, to throw that off um, and let it restore to health. I think health is the, the key word, not uh, awakening or enlightenment or whatever. It's not special. You're just trying to get healthy again. Mm. You're trying to get back your system back to normality where it's it's not being constantly bombarded with you know, uh, stress creates cortisol. It restricts everything uh, in your body. Like it'll restrict your digestion and like you're basically operating. Most people are operating like they're running from something all the time. And so the, most of their body functions are shut down to, to the absolute essentials, you know, because we're just so stressed out by these constant bombardment of fear and um, anxiety. So, um yeah, be gentle with yourself. Give yourself a chance to kind of 
reset to zero however you you your intuition takes you there um and that i think that'll just make a massive difference if we can we can start resetting then um then the the blaring screens won't have the same influence anymore if we can start getting really real about what who we are and um, what our humanity is it won't have much to do with whether we wear like a pussy hat or a maga hat or whatever what do you reckon do we have a chance i think so i'm getting more and more optimistic actually really yeah yeah i just see like like weird things are happening all the time now. They, this Skripal thing was the perfect example. That was fucking weird. That was fucking weird. How weird is it that that came out to light? It came out to light, and oh. now they're fucked. <laughs> yeah, the whole government's been lying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oops, Daisy. But like, you know, so they need some refractory p- period now before they go ahead and do the next false flag. They can't do it, just do it next week. Like they, they've been planning this for a long time and stuff, and they can't just turn around and say, "Oh, guess what? You know, uh, uh, you know how like um, don't worry. I know we lied about that, but this time we're serious. <laughs> we're absolutely serious. They can't do that. Yeah. So they're gonna have. It really set them back a lot. It did. Although I, I did see an article from the Independent saying it doesn't actually matter if we can prove it was Moscow or not. Ah. Uh, Rush is still in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know they'll try and pull that shit, but it's just it's it's getting more and more farcical. Right. And the the you know the mockery is building. I feel that people are starting to really make fun of. I'm this seeing shit. some great mockery lately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really too. high caliber mockery. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that that really fucks them. Mockery is the best way to destroy. Right, because it's you're, all built on seriousness and fear. Yeah, so you're, if you're looking at this this whole construct, they they put countless man hours into presenting you with, and it's like, oh, look at this ghost, and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to that that completely invalidates the whole thing you got to you got to ingest it they got to get you to to take it in to ingest it yeah and 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 if you're laughing at it you see the whole thing and it's it's completely impotent from there on right yeah so look you know i'm talking all about this shit but probably a lot of people have done this already yeah i think that's maybe what we're seeing is that you know people are going ah, fuck off that's stupid that's <laughs> fucking stupid um, and that's all it'll take, really, because they they just they can't do this in the light. They literally can't. I mean, I, sometimes I worry that they're going to come out and say, "All right, no, sorry, <laughs> yeah, it is a totalitarian state, and it has been this way the whole time. Uh, now we're just going to take over, and we don't care what you think anymore." Yeah, and it's not they 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 built the empire around pretending to be the good guy that would completely break the spell. Yeah, and then all of a sudden they're they're dealing with billions of humans who are like, "Oh fuck you, no." Yeah, exactly. So they cannot. They have to be very careful about keeping that in place. So that, that gives us a lot of opportunity to just keep walking forward and saying, oh, you're the good guy, are you? Okay, well, do this then. Do that. Like, show us the evidence. You're the good guy. Like, right, you, yeah. you, you can't, don't cower. Don't run away and think, oh, God, they're horrible. Keep walking forward and making sure, you know, okay, well, I'm going to pretend you're the good guy, okay? We'll just keep that in place. Good guys would do this. Are you willing to do this? Etc. So... Don't, you know, the, the instinct, I think, for most people is to kind of go, oh, they're all assholes. The whole thing's fucked. I don't want to have any part of it. No, 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 no. We've got to keep keep pretending for for our sake that they're good guys. Right, yeah. And um, also, but, uh, you know, you, you got to also be careful because one of the things that they do is they try to, <laughs> their propaganda is so highly developed that they'll try to convince you that the, the the evil thing is actually the good thing. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, no, it would be evil to not butcher civilians in Syria. <laughs> we have to keep doing that. <laughs> Obviously, we need to regime change Syria and slaughter anyone who stands between us and Assad. Because if we don't do that, people might die. <laughs> you don't want the bad guys to win. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I think we're getting our fingernails underneath those narratives as well. So at Mm. the same time, be doing that as well. But, um, you know, essentially, like you live in a free country, you should be able to get Freedom of Information Act um, documents. And if they don't arrive, then you should be able to make a noise about it. You should be able to vote and you should be able to know that that vote actually counted. You should be able to uh, enter into politics if you feel like it. And um, you should be able to go into the Democrats and and have a, a, a fair shot at making it. These are things that just should happen if they really are nice guys. You should be able to get politicians to advance the causes they say they'll advance. Yes, you should be able to... You should be able to speak. You You should should be able to have your voice heard. Right. Free speech should be a thing. And you should expect privacy. You shouldn't expect that you're, um, you're, you're, uh, you're being constantly surveyed or harassed or whatever. And when Police they... shouldn't be increasingly militarized and killing people in the streets. That should not be happening. Right. And that they should be treating people with respect and that not using a gun because, you know, their dick's too short. Sorry, that's a little bit... But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so upset, actually. I the, no, the Victorian police are starting to take on the American mind viruses. So the oh, yeah, they beat the in... shit out of this guy, this poor mentally ill guy. Yeah. He said he thought he was going to die. They were, they, oh, that was so brutal. Yeah. I, well, look, I they, thought it was America. These fucking idiots know that that guy isn't armed. We don't have guns here. And right. they, six of them turned up, the big men, big men turned up at the door, all of them armed and stuff, and against one guy, threw him on the ground. One of them, cowardly little sniveling piece of shit couldn't picked up his truncheon and was whacking him on the the back of the leg because that was the only bit of him that he could get to abuse what little shits what sniveling little cowardly pieces of crap i just cannot believe like you know how small are their dicks do they have to gather in mobs to to attack you know a defenseless fucking mentally ill guy so fucking i am so fucking angry at them because i've always like took taken pride in our police you know i've always felt quite safe here with our police uh, you know, and I've encouraged my kids to talk to them if they get, ever get in trouble. One of them, you know, brought my son back when he got a little bit lost on his Snapchat adventure or whatever. Um, and because, you know, they they have been very well trained till now, trained as social workers, trained in counselling, trained in all of these sorts of things. Something's going wrong here. And I, you know, it's probably just fucking movies and TV, like they're prop, proto-propaganda like anything else. Um, anyway, so I'm really pissed off about that. <laughs> rightly so, rightly so. But that's the sort of, that's the, 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 that's a lot of the same sort of rage that I suspect we'll eventually see when the, uh, when the bad guys get thrown off. Right, right. Well, you know, they are such cowards. Most of them, these, you know, what I think is really exciting now is that we're seeing a lot of the people a lot of the deep state now have names and faces and stuff. Right. They used to hide so much behind, you know, like teams of writers and, you know, uh, like PR and er- everyone kind of. But, yeah, they, they, they're they starting to um, to actually come out and actually be the face of it because no one else <laughs> do it. But right. also the other thing is, too, that, like, it's not really... You know, you know, I've had a little bit of an, uh, like a little curiosity about Linda Rothschild's Twitter account. Right. Like, I couldn't believe she was on Twitter. I thought that was really interesting. So I, I went and had a look and that was two years ago, I guess. And her Twitter was full of people like bowing and scraping and like uh, calling her mom and um dame and all of this sort of i guess because they thought maybe they'd get some money out of her or something i'm not sure it was really disgusting These weird genuflections and stuff verbal genuflections i would call them yeah like this very like sycophantic sort of uh sort of play and and there was fear i could feel the fear there like i didn't want to say anything to her like mm. <laughs> i wasn't gonna say anything to her um and then over that time, the her page became a mess. Like, people were just, you know, showing up just to troll, trolling, 
groups there was like she no respect whatsoever like it, it in just in two years time it went from this like sycophantic palace of you know la dee da to just just people taking out their rage against this machine you know that she represented to them now she's off twitter right she left Twitter in February, yeah. She said, oh, fuck this. Yeah. And her last tweet is all badly spelt and stuff like that. It was, like, it's clearly written in fear. Wow. And, and just- we're seeing the same thing with Bezos, I noticed, too. Like, uh, yeah, Trump, uh, I guess, was, was saying shit about him and, and Amazon and stuff um, because he doesn't like the Washington Post or whatever. Um, so... Naturally, anyone Trump goes after, no matter how despicable, you're going to get some mic resistance people coming in and saying, let's support this person. I saw maybe one person do that with Bezos and saying, well, let's all buy Amazon to stand up to Trump. <laughs> Ratio de <da> fuck. <laughs> really? Ra- just, just, uh, I think she ended up deleting her tweet. <laughs> bad idea. Some blue tick. It's like, <laughs> bad take, yeah, bad take. Bad take. <laughs> Not, not a good take. Everyone everyone hates this guy. Right. I mean, they'll still buy his shit, but they don't like him. Right. See, if, if you can't even, like, garner their anti-Trump feelings to... to then you're kind of done. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, may, maybe people are... Maybe people are... Already, maybe maybe it's happening already. Maybe we're, maybe we're uh, expelling I do, it already. I do probably think it's happening already. I don't ever feel like a prophet or anything. I always feel like we're just kind of, like narrating what's going on Mm. here like uh yeah and we'll see more signs of it as we go along or whatever but like it's yeah i'm really optimistic i feel like it's happening i feel like the awakening is happening so you know it didn't look anything like any of the sages said like yeah busted man (laughs) they were all i did you know like but it is what it is yeah, it's more like lame is than uh, than uh. Or maybe it's it's more like a species evolving and adapting. Hmm. To pressures. Well, I mean, if you think about it more like um, this thing that we call ego as an illness hmm. that we're expelling, you know, and that like, you know, it's so funny. Like we we talk about mental illness. But when you're talking to a mentally ill person, you're not thinking, oh, they're actually sick. You're just trying to deal with their personality and thinking mm. they're an asshole, usually, you know? <laughs> um, and, and that's one of the things that we've, over the decades, you know, we were talking about this just the other day. You know, weren't we? Like in the 90s, people didn't really think about mental illness as, um, as, uh, as an illness. It was just like... Uh, it was more kind of a, a personality type that needed to be dealt with. Yeah, an annoying aspect of who you are. Right, yeah. They would fucking, let's say, oh, uh, uh, this guy is particularly annoying. Let's try cutting a piece of his brain out. <laughs> yeah, that's let's right. See what happens. <laughs> see if he's less annoying. Mm. Right, so, like, maybe we're all just mentally ill and we are recovering. Hmm. That could be the whole deal. That's not very spectacular, but um, <laughs> no, I mean, we we talk about this all the time. It, it, it doesn't seem like it will be spectacular. I don't like if people are waiting for a, um, you know, a moment that looks like the last ten minutes of a Bruce Willis movie. Yeah, that's not going to happen. You're not going to get your your egoic payoff where the bad guy is kicked off the building and in, into the the flaming street. Right. Or the lava or whatever. It's it's going to be very unspectacular, very unegoically pleasing. And it's just going to kind of look like remembering a bad dream. What, what was that? Why were we doing that? Yeah. But I do keep, like, flicking between, you know, trying to work out. One of the, the great um, switcheroonies that the propaganda, the plutocratic propaganda has played on us is that it's created a situation where there's forget like we often talk about like welfare welfare for the rich and capitalism for the poor and etc but there's also like forgiveness for the rich and mm. karma for the poor you know mm. um 
the rich in je- have never had to suffer any sort of police time or any like you know they they just kind of expel their karma onto everyone else all us mm. poor buggers who feel guilty about shit and don't like you know to hurt other people you know we can destroy like our whole lives just feeling guilty over one thing that we've done you know like you see people do that if you feel very deeply about other people if you know that you've hurt someone you can derail your whole life through that guilt a man will will sedate himself in in alcohol for decades and and completely alienate everyone from his life because he like cheated on his wife once or something yeah or went to war you know and killed people under right orders or whatever meanwhile uh for the rich people, it's like, hey, yeah, oops, we ruined the economy a little bit, and, and, and millions of people suffered for it. Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? Yeah, and they just they just keep going on. Oops, Iraq, uh, a million people dead. Whatever. Where is my MSNBC panel slot? Right, because they're sociopaths. They don't feel guilt, right? Mm. So there's this eternal forgiveness that that we kind of project onto them. It's like, well, that's how I would like to be treated. But um, meanwhile, we're you know beating ourselves up for for just the fact that we're human and we have to get by in a world that where there is artificial lack you know there's deliberate systems of artificial lack putting pressure on us all the time we're under stress all the time um so you know and the ways that that will play out we will we will be assholes to each other sometimes and things go wrong and stuff and that just makes it all worse for each other so yeah like i'm I do keep playing with the idea that maybe we will see people imprisoned. Maybe the assholes will be jailed. Could totally happen. I don't know, but we're going to have to make a thing about it. Like, it's not like, you know, the, the fact that the Iraq war happened and then 15 years later we find that the architects of that are on MSNBC with a slot of, to, you know, and they're, they're celebrated as ce- celebrities. That cannot be allowed to happen. We cannot be, allow this kind of forgiveness of war criminals to the point where they become you know they just like go dark for a bit and then come up and um destroy us all over again there there has to be some sort of kind of justice yeah leaving pathogens at the very heart of the machine has got to end yeah right they need to be expelled now i don't know what that's going to look like Mm. but they, they cannot be allowed to rule anymore yeah it's just going to look like a really big no, huh? Yeah, a big fuck off. From everyone. Yeah, a big no. A big no. Anyway, it's got dark. We talked and talked. Caitlin is an entirely listener and reader-supported journalist, so if you want to support her daily podcasts and articles, the best way to do that is via Patreon or PayPal. Links in the description. You can also buy her book, Woke, A Field Guide for Utopia Preppers. Follow Caitlin on Steemit, on Medium, or on CaitlinJohnston.com, where you can get on her web mailing list and get an email notification whenever she publishes an article. You have been listening to Going Rogue. Shine on, people. Thanks, y'all. Katie, oh, Katie, who are you pissing off now? Katie, oh, Katie, your words are making them howl. You're trying to spread truth, but they don't want to hear it, and we don't think that's right. Keep talking, Katie. Oh, Katie, who are you pissing off now? Shady, they're so shady. They're lying straight to our face. But maybe, oh, maybe, the truth they'll finally embrace. TV says you're batshit crazy and they paint you as a fool. Keep fighting, Katie. Oh, Katie. Who are you pissing off now? We love you, Katie. Oh, Katie. Keep speaking truth to power. We've got your back, so don't cower. Our pretty horse. Love your girlfriend. <laughs>